Now, Pike, in his lecture on Masonic symbolism, and his second lecture on the Omkara and other ineffable words, transcribed and annotated by Rex R. Hutchins, Pike really loved the Pythagorean Tetractus. Let me see if I can get a picture. This is the greater Tetractus with the larger triangle, and there's the lesser Tetractus there. You see it's got the... Uh, triple delta triangle within it. That's one such. Uh, and then from this, the cube can be found, of course. Pike really enjoyed studying the Tetractus because the, the idea of the deity being triple is what always interested Pike. And the, uh, the theme of triangles is huge in Freemasonry. You can see that the uh, Bell Mountain is almost triangular in a way. You can see that top peak and you can see triangles in it all over the place. You can see triangles in nature everywhere. Things happen in trinities. There's a triangle. The peak of a mountain is a triangle. The uh, diamond is a triangle. This theme of uh, triangulation, of triplicity, of trinity, is one that exercised Albert Pike enormously. One of the interesting aspects of the triangle that I want to show you, if I can, if it will show you, please show you. Oh, I've got it zoomed in too much. Hold on. Now I've got it really zoomed in. There we go. I'll get this. Notice within the triangle here that you can find a square. Now that's interesting because a square, now a square always denotes a cube. This is a cube here. You're seeing one side of the cube with a square, and it always denotes a cube. And then the cube can be found within the tetractus. This is the infinite cube of space. This is the cube that is involved in Freemasonry. And so it's interesting that. Pike emphasized this theme of the symbolism of the cube as well as within the Tetractus. There's much more to the Tetractus than just this. The idea, well, the trinity in the Kabbalah, the upper triangle in the Kabbalah tree of life, the triad Keter, Hokmah, and Bina as the great divine intellectual one. It's always in a triplicity. There's always a threeness to the deity, is what uh, Pike says. And, and this is so interesting because, again, the Masonic apron with the square base of the apron and with the flap turned up shows a triangle. The symbolism is within the very clothing of Freemasonry as well as in the numbers, the division of their deities, he says, into triads was a favorite one among all the ancient nations. This triplicity of the deity. And, of course, most of these had no allusion whatever to a unity of substance in three persons. That is not their idea of the trinity. That came later on in Christianity. A trinity or a trin unity is how he puts it. The Indian trinity or trimurti of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva is such a trinity, of course. Creator, preserver, and destroyer is how the, uh, the ancient Indians saw it. Many of the triads involve simply the idea of male, female, and issue, or child. And this was one of the early Christian trinities. Interestingly enough, I've, I've actually made videos on this elsewhere, where the in some early Christian groups, they had the Father, Mother, and the Son as the original trinity of the governance of the universe. And Pike notes this. And then the Trimurti. And, and I'll show you the uh, Trimurti, the Indian Trimurti, which is really quite interesting. The three-headed figure. This is also found in ancient Egypt, interestingly enough. And then, of course, there's a... There's a very interesting representation there, found on a medallion. The Radiant One is what he's called. The idea, well, and then he shows the uh, Siberian medal. Now, this is interesting. 
published by Dr. Parsons and now deposited in the Imperial Cabinet at St. Petersburg. It's found in an old ruined chapel near the river. Uh, it's the Terra Sigillata. And it, it's very fascinating. I've got to show you this. Various, various types of trinities. You can see the three yods in this Hebrew one. It's interesting how the, uh, how the Hebrews also had this type of a trinity deal. And then the three different leaves here on this one. And then you have the maple leaf, of course, the triple maple leaf as a symbol. And then the various depictions of the hand with the three fingers from the various uh, traditions of the Hebrew, the Papal. You can see there's the three fingers. You can see the, uh, the three various aspects, the three pointers, the three fingers coming from the cloud, the three fingers. Very interesting on a... Uh, on the symbolism as the hand symbolizes the deity as they signal to each other the symbolisms. <laughs> the high priest of the Hebrews had this, according to uh, Pike. And then, of course, the ancient Hindu image of Surya, the sun. It shows three fingers extended and the, the thumb holding the small finger. And this was a symbol of the sun, because the sun had a triple aspect. And this is very huge in the ancient Egyptian. Pike doesn't mention it, but I've... Uh, Ray Kepri and... I uh, can't remember the other one right off the top of my head, but uh, the sun, as it rises in the east, it's overhead, it's in a zenith in the south, and then it sets in the west. This triple aspect of the sun is absolutely symbolized by the scout sign. Oh, I should do that with my right hand, huh? Boy, some boy scout I am. The three. The three fingers. Symbolizing the three different aspects of the sun. And believe me, you Masons, you'll know, this is symbolism in our lodge, isn't it? The worshipful master is the in the east as the sun rises to adorn the day, we're told. The junior warden is in the south as the sun reaches its zenith in the sky, and the senior warden is in the west as the sun is setting in the west. The symbolism of the sun, a triple unity, is extremely well brought out in Freemasonry. And it's absolutely all over the ancient world in all of the ancient mysteries. It's one of those, it's one of those aspects that Pike discusses showing that the the, the Masonic theme has its antecedents in antiquity. The conceptualization is very similar. And then, of course, and I've shown this before in other videos too, and I was very pleased to find this symbolism in uh, Pike's also, where the apron as a cube, the bottom part of the apron is a cube, and then the top part is the triangle, you actually have a pyramid on a cube with that symbolism of the Masonic apron. We are wearing the cubicle stone of Freemasonry, a symbol of it, a symbol of the aspiration from the earthly mundane aspects of life as we lift that flap into the upward pointing triangle we pass from the mundane cares of the world into the philosophical, spiritual truths that help better our lives and build up our fellow men around us in society. This, this symbolism is very beautifully depicted, this cubicle stone in the uh, surmounted by a pyramid in Freemasonry. It's, it's a fascinating thing.